Tell me a little bit about your Mustang when you first bought it. What prompted you to think that you needed one? That's, that's a good question. So since I'm the original owner, this was uh, almost 60 years ago. And uh, my, my father had a 65 Mustang uh, for, for a while. And uh, I loved it. So when I graduated from college in, in 66, I said, you know, I'm going to give myself a present. You know, I did all this hard work and I was a, I was a geeky engineer guy and I had my first job down in the San Francisco Bay Area. So to make a long story longer, I, I ordered the car. It's actually, actually, I ordered it to, to spec and it was uh, built in the, uh, in the Ford plant in Fremont, California, which is on the, the south uh, east side of the Bay Area. It's now a, uh, I think a, a Tesla plant, as a matter of fact. And you went down to Marv Tonkin. Yeah, and I bought it here at Marv Tonkin Ford dealership, and I still have all the original paperwork, and I even, in fact, I have the original window sticker. It shows it. And, um, yeah, and I bought it, and, uh, you know, it was hot out of undergraduate work, hot-footed it down to, uh, as, a, as an engineer, down to the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, in, in kind of a high-tech area before high-tech, the terminology was even invented, and uh, lived down there for quite a few years. So that's how I originally started with the car. How did you go about deciding, because you picked the options for the car, how did you go about deciding what you wanted? Okay, the, um, uh, the, the main thing, I guess, is, is, the, is the engine. They came standard, I believe, with a, with a six-cylinder engine. But uh, I think my father had mentioned to me that the, the small little V8s, which is what this is, uh, is actually more efficient and is safer because when you have a little bigger engine, the tires and wheels and the steering and brakes, I believe, are, are beefed up. And therefore, it's a little bit safer. By the way, in those days, you know, going from a six to an eight was like it cost a humongous hundred and fifty bucks or something. I mean, it's like, I think it costs it costs about the same as a radio. And by the way, it has an AM radio in it that still works. And of course, in those days, I don't even know if FM had been invented yet, but it wasn't available. I don't think in, in cars. And then the other thing was, as moving moving from Portland to the to California, where it's sunny a lot, and uh, I didn't really want air conditioning because they in those days I, I always felt they, they'd be the first thing to break would probably be the air conditioning. So uh, they, I went through the list of options. They had, uh, and it has uh, tinted glass on the windows, so I thought that would keep it a little bit cooler in the California sun. And I didn't really want a convertible, but I like the looks of a convertible. So it actually has the, uh, a vinyl roof. I think it may have been called a Landau roof. I'm not sure of that terminology. So it, does, it has a white Landau roof. And then I thought that, wow, uh, candy apple red really looks great. Uh, compared to this and so it looks like a I always call it like a fake convertible but the real reason is because of its neat looks remember I was only 21 at the time 22 <clears throat> and uh, and also it was um, you know non air conditioned but it will stay as cool as it could as it could, could be in the California well it's side. pretty amazing that you're the original owner and it's never been hit there's no rust it's just been taken care of it's but it was used but it was it's it's very, very meticulously.
because there, there's nothing else. Like you say, it's never been an accident. It has a straight, rust-free frame. So nothing else uh, traumatic has happened, except I just th thought it was fun to get up to 100 miles an hour for you know 30 seconds or however long I did it. Well, you said a baseball hit the passenger side rear fender and, and put you put a little right, mark right. on it. Right, that little ding is still there. It's the only real ding in the in the body. It was at a uh, at a baseball game, right, and, and a, a home run or something hit hit the car in the parking lot. Do you remember it. when it happened? Yeah, so, sort of. All I remember is everybody was laughing and everything because it wasn't their car. And the main comment was, well, at least it didn't hit a window. And that, and that ding, if we wanted it, could be pounded out from the, from the trunk because the inside of the trunk, by the way, the trunk's all original also still, as are all the uh, all the floor mats and the, and the upholstery. Every, everything is that you see is 100% original. You're right. I uh, I know it's... Even the it's, spare tire in the trunk. That's it, what I was getting. It's pretty easy to get a dent wizard to take the dent out, but I think the the history intact leaving that all intact and not getting all this repop stuff from overseas right. to it's right. 100 percent the way it came off right. the factory the way, right. and then the next person can decide if they have to change anything but it right now it's all original all there and that's pretty special tell me a little bit about the stickers on the windows uh, the ibm stickers oh yeah i didn't mention but when i when i moved to the San Francisco Bay Area originally, as, as a wet behind the ears, you know, engineer out of college, uh, that's what I worked for down in the Silicon Valley was IBM because computers always kind of were fascinating to me. And, and remember, this is the day when computers were as big as a house. You know, remember the PC and the Mac weren't even a glimmer in anybody's eyes yet. We're, I'm talking, uh, you know, 66, almost 60 years ago. And once again, it wasn't even called Silicon Valley then. There was, that, that term wasn't even in existence yet. Anyway, so that's what I did. So the, the parking, the original parking stickers, like everything else, are there are a couple of small uh, parking stickers in the window still that say I think there are two of them. They both say IBM on them because they were, one was probably from the California uh, lab and plant and lab, and the other was from the, the Portland uh, sales service office. Well, my parents lived in a condo. In fact, it's the same condo that I've inherited that we're I'm talking from right now. So for the for the last uh, you know, 30 or 35 years, it's been stored in, in the underground parking slot in, in, in this condo. So it's been out of, out of the uh, weather. And, uh, but when I brought it back, I, I, it sat around for about 10 of those, you know, 30 or so years. And I decided, you know, I might as well get it, uh, you know, cleaned up soon. It's just been sitting collecting dust. So I took it to the local uh, family owned mechanic here in town that I know. And I said, hey, you know, why don't you get this car really you know, not spiffied up, but uh, uh, legal, street, le you know, street legal or whatever the term is, uh, and, and re repair all of the, uh, you know, the rubber parts and just give it a giant, humongous tune-up. Uh, and they said that they, it hadn't been driven in so long that a small amount of gas was left in the tank, had to be boiled out, that kind of thing. And I, but I have all the receipts. I have, a, I have all the maintenance receipts from all, from all 60 years of its maintenance, actually. So I have the paperwork from the day it was born or delivered until now. So I have all that, all that, all that and that's part of, that's part of the, uh, the documentation here. This car is almost like my, my kid, you know, it's, a, it's the first car I bought, probably the first new car I ever bought in my life, right out of college before going to, to work. And um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy it like, like I have for over half a century.